you know who we spoke about last week? Jesus. Man in the Bible. <laughs> Jesus is always the Sunday school answer. It's always the right answer. But, we, but in addition to Jesus, who else did we talk about? Moses. Moses! We talk, Thank you, Russ. We talked about the story of Moses. And we're going to pick up that story of Moses this morning uh, in Exodus chapter 3. We're continuing to look at Moses as an example for us of how do we know what God's will is. How did Moses know what God's will is? God spoke to him. That's, that's the message today. God spoke to him. And God continues to speak to us today. In fact, if you look through the Old Testament, there's kind of three things and three ways that God constantly spoke. Number one, where else? Oh, are we going to leave, Debbie? Oh, I thought they were staying. Okay, well then in that case, see, I was rushing along so that we, I didn't go long-winded. Now I can preach longer if the kids are going to leave. It's up to you. The children want to stay out here or go with David. I know you're going to want to go with David. What kind of choice is that? Children's worship, follow David. Sorry you guys don't get to stay outside, David. So uh, I was going to say it was Moses leading the children of Israel, but it probably is, because notice the children are always trying to lead. That was a joke, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, Roxanne. The way God spoke in the Old Testament it had, had uh, like a pattern to it. No, number one, God would uniquely speak to his people. In fact, if you look for him to do it the same way, it doesn't happen. How many times did God speak through a burning bush? The, the microphone's off, just so you know. Yeah. Testing one, two, three, four. Still no microphone? I may have to move closer, watch out. Testing one, two, three, four. The battery looks nice and bright red. Did you? Did I what? I didn't put anything on my end. Testing one, two, three, four. Testing one, two, three, four. It must be the sun. By the way, anybody need sunscreen? Shauna brought some extra. <laughs> Testing one, two, three, four. Okay, well, I'm going to walk down below while you try to work. Testing one, two, three, four. Bars. <laughs> Don't get rid of you. How many times did God speak through a burning bush? One time, one time, right? Um, and if you look through the Old Testament and the way God spoke, he used a variety of different ways. And the reason why I point that out is, is that sometimes we're looking for God to speak the same way every time. So it was raining the day that God spoke to me the last time. So if it's raining again, then whatever I'm thinking must be God's will, right? Y'all should be shaking your heads, no. No. See, and here, one of the dangers is that sometimes we're trying to understand God's will and we'll say, okay, well, God, I want an open or a closed door. So you close the door and that'll show me whether I'm supposed to do this or not. Or you open the door and that'll show me whether I'm supposed to do this or not. But that may not be true either because God does not speak the same every time. And it's really, we have to really be careful because sometimes we are actually trying to create our own magical formulas for what God is saying. The fact is, God uniquely speaks to his people. If you look at your life, every single one of you was called to a relationship with Jesus Christ in probably a different way than the person next to you. Very few people, other than Alan and myself, in this group, have been called to Jesus Christ in, an, in a large crusade setting. Has anyone else? Large crusade, Sherman. Well, that works, but that's about, about, about the percentage. There's, and Roxanne, there's usually about 4 to 5% maximum. In fact, there's usually even less in a crowd of people that came to Christ in a large citywide kind of crusade. God uses all different ways to speak to his people, and he does that all throughout the Old Testament. Here's one. How many of you have had God speak to you through a donkey? And now, I wasn't using the cursing language. I'm talking about a real donkey, four-legged, tail, 
you know, the kind that you know, they, they're sure-footed, but maybe they're a little bit persnickety. Anyone have you that? No, well, God spoke in the Old Testament through, through a donkey. There are all different kinds of ways that God speaks, and we don't want to try to work up a magical formula so that that's the way I'm going to know if it's God's will. How many of you have used a fleece in your life? Ah, okay. That worked for Gideon, but it might not work for you, so watch out. So Gideon put this fleece, it's a, pe a, s a sheepskin. He lays it on the ground. He says, okay, God, you make it, you make the ground wet and the fleece, and the fleece dry. Y you know what? Are you having fun over there? <laughs> Doesn't he look like he's having fun over there? <laughs> Testing one, two, three, four. Am I back? Yeah. yeah, but we also have a high-pitched uh, sound. Yeah. 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 Testing one, two, three, four. Are you sure I'm back? Yes. So secondly, not only does God uniquely speak to his people, but secondly, God, the people knew when God was speaking. Well, now there's a novel thing. The people actually knew that God was speaking. In fact, if you look at our text, we're going to read in just a moment. In our text, it says that, that Moses is a little bit concerned. How are they going to know who you are? How are they going to know that I'm you're the prophet, that I'm supposed to lead them out? And he says, look, I'll tell them, okay? And, I'll, and he gives them his name, and he says, they're going to believe you. The elders are going to follow you because they're going to know it's me speaking. God's people knew when God was speaking. We're asking God to show us his will. It's really important that we're not trying to tell God his will. We're asking God, am I going to drop this one yet? Good, because I'm losing my voice. Thanks. We're, we're saying, God, show us what your will is. God, you've got to reveal that to us. In fact, we have been actually, if anything, we're trying to catch up to God's will. Does anybody know how fast this has happened already? Okay. Years ago, and ask, ask Virgil to tell you the story. Years ago, there not, an opportunity to came to buy, to buy this, this corner, and the leadership chose not to. A number of years later, in fact, just after we came here, another opportunity came to buy this corner, and the leadership chose not to. Now, some might look back, and I know Virgil and I have conversed a lot about this, and he kind of has this feeling like, you know, we, we kind of blew it those first two times. Third time's the charm is what Virgil says, right? Okay, watch out. That's a magical thing, okay? So be careful. But God maybe didn't want us to buy it those first two times. But it's been very obvious that God has opened up a door in a really rapid kind of way. It's it, You all know that I like to do things, and, and I'm kind of a little bit, you know, out there okay you know that right I'm, I'm a little dangerous okay this has been fast for me <laughs> okay the, the speed at which first off meeting with Bill finding out that the property had all the issues with the cannabis finding out that the property was all of a sudden available literally telling you okay well I think we're interested going back to the board and they said well what are you waiting for what do you mean what am I waiting for well you, you need to try and so going back setting up and, and actually doing putting it into escrow, putting an offer on it. It has happened extremely fast. It's shut down. Don't you find that amazing that it's shut down right now? We wouldn't even be out here today if they were open. It just Things are happening in rapid speed, and I think that God's been at work for a number of years in this. And so instead of us looking back and saying, maybe they blew it in the past, I think that this is God's time. And we're trying to be responsive to God's mind. And in the Old Testament, if you look, the children of Israel know when God is speaking. You will know if God is speaking to us, and it can't be just Pastor Bill. And then thirdly, the people knew what God said. When God said, okay, you're supposed to leave uh, Egypt, and you're supposed to head back to the Promised Land, they knew that God was telling them to do that. In fact, let's look at that text now and see it. If you have your Bibles, Exodus chapter 3, verse 13. Exodus 3, 13. Moses is at the burning bush already. He's already been having a conversation with God. And Moses said to God, Suppose I go. This is after Mo God has already told Moses. Hey, Moses. First off, take your shoes off. You're on holy ground. Did everybody do that? Oh, okay. Yes, he did. There we go. <laughs> So Moses has already seen the bush, come across the, the valley, realized it's burning, but it's not burning. 
God starts speaking to him. And now, in, in that conversation, God says, Moses, I want you to leave the children of Israel out of bondage. Moses tried to do that 40 years earlier, murdered a guy, scared off the Israelites, and nobody wanted to follow him. And on top of that, Pharaoh was out for his neck. So Moses has left. He's now become a shepherd. Oh, God's been preparing him. And now Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they ask me, What is his name? Uh, why would they ask such a question? What's his name? Because they were living in a time where there were multitudes of, of gods. They were living in a country where there were a, a, a host of gods, a horde of gods. In fact, you could kind of create a new god for every day in any event that you wanted. So they need to know which, which one of the many, many gods that are out there sent you, Moses. We also think you're crazy, but no, no. Which, which god sent you? And, he's, and, they, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. I am Yahweh. I am God. I will be what I will be. I am the beginning, the end, the first and the last. I am who I am. Now it's interesting, with that very name, it says, this is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. It's this, with this name of Yahweh. It's this name that's not even written in the Hebrew Bible. They, they in place put in the, the word for Adonai, which means Lord, because the Jews believe that in the, in the name is the very identity, the very presence, the power of God himself. And so they treat that name so sacredly, so special, that they don't even say the name out loud. And this is I am. I am. Notice he says, I am. The one who is with you now. The one who is here. The one who is in the present. The one who is right here on this corner. The one who resides in this community. The one who created this planet. God, I am, is with you. And it's the God. And he says, let me give you a further information about myself. I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus later will quote that and point out that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is not the God of the dead but the God of the living. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, all three alive with God. And he says, I am the I am. And by the way, this is the name that, that Jesus will take upon himself. It's the reason why they will say blasphemy. It's the reason why they will say curse him. The, the high priest will rip his, his robe from his chest and say, he's said it right here in front of you. He's declared himself to be what? God by using and invoking the name of God himself on himself. And with that, he'll go to the cross. And then to Moses, God said, Go assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. Moses, you're supposed to go tell them, I've heard. Some of you prayed for the cool air. God heard. Here Moses is saying, on behalf of God who appeared to me out there in the desert, he said to tell you, after 400 years of bondage, after the suffering has gotten really bad here in Egypt, he says, I want you to know I've been listening. I've watched what's happening in your life. I know what you've been going through. I've heard your prayers. I've seen your burden. And I have come to set you free from that oppression. And what does God also say? It's Moses, they're going to listen to you. By the way, don't forget, Moses already said, I can't talk, I'm a stutterer. I don't have the ability to communicate well. So, so God's already going to oblige him by giving him Aaron to be his spokesman. He's going to have the rod that's going to give, have power within it to be a, a sign for them. But, but now he says, they're, they're going to listen to you. Verse 18, the elders of Israel will listen to you. Who are the elders? Those that are, should be closest to God. Those who have the big, most concern for God's people. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him. Now they're given a responsibility. They're supposed to go together. He with the elders. Go to Pharaoh and say to him this. The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. 
Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to Lord, to the Lord our God. But God warns them, I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. The people are going to listen to you. They're actually going to join with you. They're going to go up with you. They're going to fight that battle alongside of you, Moses. You're not going to have to go talk to Pharaoh alone. Together you are going to say, God's listened to us, God's heard us, and God wants us to worship him. Wow, isn't that what we're doing here today? God's invited us to come out here and in this community to worship him. Oh, this is amazing. And then he says, watch, watch folks what I will do if you will obey me. This is, this is the incredible thing that, that God invites us with. When we partner with him, when we obey what he's called us to do, he says, watch what I will do. Notice, not watch what you are going to do. Watch what I will do if you will obey me. So verse 20, so I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, Pharaoh will let you go. And I will make the Egyptians favorably disposed toward this people so that when you leave, you will not go empty-handed. Every woman is to ask her neighbor and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing, which you will put on your sons and daughters, and so you will plunder the Egyptians. Watch what I will do. If you obey me, oh my, I'm going to give you the resources beyond your imagination. Without fighting a single fight, without killing a single soldier, without going into any kind of a battle, you are going to have all the resources you need. You're going to go to your neighbor and say, can we have silver and gold and they're going to give it to you. Where did that $500 come from? Okay, I'm sorry. I just, I, I, I think things like this are kind of cool. <laughs> that, that God's doing things in this community. Look, he's saying, Israel, you're going to plunder, you're going to take silver and gold from the community as you're leaving to go to go to the promised land. And, and, and God is already, why did the newspaper come and ask us for permission to talk about this to the community? Because God's at work, folks. And God's going to accomplish His purposes. God wants to reveal to us His purposes. He wants us to hear His voice. He wants us to listen to what He's saying. But take note of this. How many of you have plans for what you're going to do with your life? A few of you are nodding. How, how many of you already have succeeded with those plans and you're moving on to some others? How many failed at the plans and that's why you're moving on to some others? Okay, now well, there we go, finally. <laughs> See, here, here's the thing. What you plan to do for God, this is what Moses had. He says, I'm going to go set these people free. So he sees this guy over here, this Egyptian, and he kills him. He murders him. Because he's going to do it. And he said, God says, no, that's not the way it's done. I'm going to do it. What you plan to do for God really isn't the important thing. What he plans to do through you is what's critical, folks. It's not you say, hey, God, bless us. Bless what we're going to do. It's saying, God, what are you going to do? We want to be a part of your work, your kingdom work. Yeah. We all kind of uh, sit around and dream about what our, our plans for our lives, right? We, we organize our week. We organize our schedule. We think about what we're going to do. But it's God's plans that really matter. And we want to experience God working through us rather than us telling God to do something for us. Oh, by the way, how many of you have been successful at some plan? Well, here's the bad news. Just because you were successful doesn't mean it was God's will. Well, look, we have guests. She's, she's actually calling for her doggies. <laughs> so just because you're successful does not mean that that was God's plan or that it pleased the Lord. But God does want us to follow Him daily, to listen to His voice on a daily basis. Incidentally, what, what are some ways that God speaks to you? Think about that for a minute. How are some ways that God speaks to you? In the Old Testament, boy, they used all kinds of things, including things like casting the lot, the, they, they throw the stones down, the Urim and the, Th the Thummim, and see which one spoke to them. They might speak through a prophet to come and speak to them. But how does God speak today? I think one of the first things, and this is really a title of the message, that God speaks through the Holy Spirit. 
God is speaking and speaks to His people through the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16 says, I will ask the Father and He will give you another, an advocate, who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive Him because it isn't looking for Him and it doesn't recognize Him. But you know Him because He lives with you now and later will be in with you. God, the Holy Spirit, is speaking to us, folks. God's if you will listen, God the Holy Spirit wants to guide you each day of your life. God has a divine appointments He wants to lead you into. We've talked about this, our oikos, the people that are around us, that God puts in our life on a moment-by-moment -moment basis. You're driving down the road, you see somebody with a flat tire, and you pull over to help them. God set up a divine appointment, and the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you and through you in that situation. But what's the second way that God speaks to us? Isn't this one of God's best tools for God speaking to us? God speaks to us through His Word. Listen to all Scripture is from 2 Timothy 3.16. All Scripture is inspired by God. All Scripture. And it is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is, watch out, what is wrong in our lives. Some of us need that correction that comes from the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip His people to do every good work. It's not all bad news, is it? The Word of God equips us, prepares us, gives us instruction and insight so that we're able to serve God wherever we're at, whatever place we're at. A third way that God speaks to us, He speaks to the Holy Spirit, He speaks through the Bible. A third way God speaks to us is what we did a few moments ago. It's through prayer. And, and, and we need those times where we simply bow on our knees, maybe face to the ground, and we simply listen. Don't forget that sometimes our praying is more about us talking than listening, and it probably should be the other way around. Prayer is a conversation with God. And I'm just going to warn you, how many of you like it when somebody does all the talking in a conversation? Well, if you're a, yeah, I understand, if you're a quiet person, you don't like to talk, you don't want to share anything of yourself, you may like it if that other person, just, you, got, you do all the talking, that way I don't need to. But the fact is, is that you don't build relationship unless you also listen. There's a reason why God gave us one tongue and two ears. God wants us to listen. And prayer needs to be a, something that we do and listen to God as well. And I hope and pray that that's what we've been doing even these last few weeks. Even as we're here, as you walk around here this morning later, that you're going to take some time just to listen to God. I, I wish you could see the view I get right now as, as people keep coming by and stop on the corner and stuff. It, it, it's God saying, just listen. Because there's a, there's a vision here that God wants us to see. And, it, and it's got to be bigger than all of us. So listen to, to the the Jesus, the Holy Spirit, excuse me, the Bible through prayer. And, and, and the fact is, is that circumstances do tell us something, don't they? Here's something I can tell you right now. We're going to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we're not going to buy this property if we don't raise at least that $66,000. There, that's, that's kind of easy, isn't it? That circumstance is going to tell us. Look, we, could, we can vote unanimously this afternoon at 5 o'clock. We can stand and cheer and get all excited. But the bottom line is, if if we don't raise the funds, God's speaking. I probably should qualify that. Clarify. God may be speaking, may be actually telling us to do it. God may actually tell you to give a gift of some amount. Did I die again? I came back to life. God may actually be telling you, give a gift of a certain amount. And, and, and I don't know about you, but most of us don't have extra money sitting around. Crestline is not a wealthy community. We're, we don't have hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yet, God's going to speak to us and He's going to say, give this amount. He may actually challenge you. One of our families has already said, I have a, a dollar amount that God wants me to give. It's $1,000. And they also said, and we're going to increase our commitment to the church X amount. God's going to do that through us. And if we will be obedient to what He says, then I know that we'll raise the funds. And we will know it's God's will. So God speaks through circumstances. And then ultimately, why are we having a vote this afternoon? <laughs> well, because you said we're having a vote, Bill, so I don't know. <laughs> because God speaks through His people. 
God speaks through the church. God speaks through the unity of his people. And I believe that God is going to talk to us together in a united kind of way. That it shouldn't be something that we just force upon you. That the leadership team says, you all have to do this. We're not going to send you a bill and say, here's the amount you've got to give. This is going to be something that the Holy Spirit, working through us all, speaks to his church. And together we hear God's voice because God speaks to his church. Ephesians 4.15 we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ, who is the head of his body, the church. He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its special work. We all need to be involved in God's work. It helps the other parts to grow when we all do that, so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. That's Ephesians 4, verse 15. And I realize I skipped a couple of verses, so I should just share them with you, go backwards through prayer. This is what the Lord says, the Lord who made the earth, who formed and established it, whose name is the Lord, ask me, and I will tell you remarkable secrets. You do not know about things to come. Jeremiah 33, 3. And God speaks through circumstances. Be thankful in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you who belong to Christ Jesus, 1 Thessalonians 5.18 and Proverbs 16.9. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. None of us knows what tomorrow holds. None of us knows whether we'll be alive tomorrow. But we know that we can trust God because God's leading us forward. I really believe that God is speaking to us. And that he's wants to speak to us in a clear and a united kind of way. Are you listening? And first I ask, God has told you that He loves you. He loves you with an unconditional love. He loves you so much that He died on a cross for you. And he, and he loves you so much that He's inviting you into that personal relationship with Him. Are you listening? You've heard His invitation. You've, you've maybe even at some point in your life said, Yes, I, I want to follow you, Jesus. Are you doing it today? Are you listening? So God says, I love you. Just enjoy my love. Are you listening? And secondly, God has been responding to your prayers. God's been speaking to you. God's been giving you wisdom and counsel and guidance and direction. God himself has sat down to converse with you in a holy kind of relationship. Are you listening? Are you listening to the warnings God's giving to you? Are you listening to the challenges? Are you listening to the invitation to join him in his work? Are you listening? And a third one. God has given you clear instructions on His will. He's given you details. Clear instructions on what you should do and how you can serve Him and what you should do with your life. He's already told you. In fact, for some of us, we're saying, God, I need an answer. And He's saying, I gave you the answer already. Are you listening? Are you listening to the will of God, to the counsel that God himself has given to you. Three areas. Are you listening? God loves you. Are you listening? God has already responded to your prayers. Are you listening? God has actually shared his will, his specific will, with you. Are you listening? 